right, well, welcome everyone to DrupalCon day two, uh, or three, if you did training. Um, it's my pleasure to uh, present today views for beginners in Drupal 8. Um, yeah, so my name is David Needham. Uh, I, uh, this is my, my wife and uh, little one who is uh, now almost two years old. Um, I'm gonna be using them for a little bit for a couple of the examples, so I thought it'd be good to kind of show them, and I'm super proud, of course, good family. Um, yeah, so I've been doing Drupal for almost eight years, um, and uh, over the years I've, I've seen a lot of roadblocks with uh, kind of the learning curve of Drupal. It can be very difficult for a lot of beginners to step in and learn how to do what they need to do. Uh, just because the interface is confusing or the terminology is unique to Drupal or whatever, there, there's a lot of reasons for it. Um, so it's been uh, a little bit of my, uh, my mission and, and learning Drupal and, and talking about Drupal is helping people get over those roadblocks or get over those speed bumps to do everything that they need to do to really empower them to use Drupal uh, to, to the most that they can. Um, to kind of that goal or that mission, uh, I, I started a nonprofit called Enjoy Creativity. It's uh, uh, specifically a nonprofit that helps churches and ministries with web design and SEO and marketing and uh, graphic design and stuff like that. So really kind of helping them to leverage Drupal in a way that is uh, it's good, good for the organization. Um, as a result, it's also been great for nonprofits. Uh, there's a ton of overlap between nonprofits and you know, kind of other faith-based organizations. So uh, it's been good kind of meeting and greeting and uh, kind of giving back to the community in that way. Um, I'm also a, a partner at Triplo. Uh, it's a Twin Cities-based uh, organization that helps uh, freelancers with uh, sort of business coaching, mentoring, uh, kind of how to market themselves, how to uh, set goals for their personal business, whether it's location independence or getting more money or saving for retirement or having more time for their kids, wh whatever it is. Everyone has a goal for their business, and uh, we try to help them kind of get to their goals. So, uh, yeah, that's really been my focus. Like I said, I'm, I'm based out of the Twin Cities. Uh, the, the Drupal community there is really, really amazing, so shout out to that uh, real quick. Uh, if you are anywhere near the Twin Cities or if you are able to travel a little bit, uh, the Twin Cities Drupal Camp is the last week in June, so it's just a, a month away. Um, before I lived in the Twin Cities, uh, it was my favorite Drupal Camp. Uh, I, I traveled from San Francisco to go to the Twin Cities Drupal Camp, and eventually it led to me moving there. So it's, it's a very good camp. Like I said, if you can make it, uh, it'd be great to see you there. So. Uh, I think it'd be good, uh, this is a beginner session, to jump right in and say, what is Views exactly? Um, if you asked a friend, if you, you know, kind of looked it up, you might see, you know, well, Views is a, a query builder with a graphical interface. Uh, but, you know, this kind of uses some jargon. You know, it, it, it's, it's a, a very technical description of what it is, uh, and that's not super helpful. Uh, if I asked my wife about this, you know, like, or if I told her, if this is my answer to what is views, she would kind of look at me funny and not really understand. So uh, to simplify this, views is essentially a way to make dynamic lists. At its simplest, a view creates a list that dynamically updates itself uh, based on all sorts of criteria. So let's continue that example a little bit. Let's, let's say I'm trying to describe uh, my, my wife, Felicia, she uh, does a kind of a craft business from home. Uh, she wants to be able to update content or, or create content on her website and then feature it uh, throughout the website. So maybe she has a blog post. Uh, she wants to, of course, create the blog post. She'll, she'll write it. Uh, and then maybe on the front page she has, you know, here are, are my recent blog posts. Uh, here are some of my recent products. Uh, maybe she has a rotating slideshow. It's like, here's the featured thing that I'm, I'm featuring. Uh, and then she has like a, a blog page where it has all of the blogs listed or all the blog uh, articles listed there with a pager at the bottom to flip between them. Um, so if you're not using views, if you were just jumping in and uh, into Drupal or whatever, and if you're writing this code from scratch in HTML or whatever, uh, you'd create the content, of course. You have to start with the content. And then you'd have to go to all the places that the content exists, all the places you want to feature the content and actually change it. So, you know, if there's a block on the front page, it has here our upcoming, uh, I'm sorry, not our upcoming events, but our, here are the recent blog posts we've written. You'd have to go there, you'd edit the block, you'd type in this thing, you'd put in the link. Okay, now there's the full page, there's the blog page. We'd have to go to that page, edit it, 
update the description, update the link, update all that information, the, the featured image and all that. Uh, and that that's tedious. It's not super great. Uh, and then if we have a slideshow and she wants to feature it on the slideshow, um, she'd have to probably jump in with a little code. She'd have to know the, the jQuery or whatever's generating the slideshow, excuse me, uh, and, and make it so that it, it updated with that content. Um, or if she knows a, a little bit of SQL, you, you could make the site dynamic. You could, you know, you could essentially create your own CMS and, uh, you know, use SQL, make it dynamically update in all these places. But uh, this is a beginner's session. Uh, as beginners, you guys don't have to know code. Uh, you don't have to know any code at all to use views uh, with, with tons and tons of power. Um, so uh, those aren't really valid options. Uh, my, my wife doesn't know any code, and that's okay. She can use views to create uh, dynamic lists on her website without any code whatsoever. Um, so the simplified workflow here, if we start using views, we can kind of create content, you know, so we go to the blog post, we write it, we publish it, and then my wife can have some chai. And that's really what she wants. She wants to publish her content and have it just automatically go where it needs to go. She doesn't want to have to go to the individual pages and make updates. She doesn't want to write any code. She just wants to write her content and kind of move on with her day. Um, and Views lets you do that. So here's an example. Um, this is a you know somewhat typical front page. We have the, the rotating slideshow and we have some kind of uh, featured content on the bottom here. Um, this entire page is dynamically generated with views. Uh, there's a, a number of views listed here, um, and you don't have to statically uh, create or edit these yourself. Um, you create the content, and it automatically flows where it needs to go on the site. So here's a quick call out. Uh, so we have the slideshow, that's a view. Uh, maybe it shows the uh, content that specifically has the checkbox that says featured or has the slideshow image or however you want to do it. It's a view. We also have this uh, latest sermon section here. Uh, it's also a view. It just automatically updates to show the most recent uh, sermon content that's been created. We also have a list of announcements. This, these are listed chronologically. Um, this actually takes two content types. It takes events and announcements, which are distinct in certain ways, and it puts them together in the same list, sorts them chronologically, puts them on the page, and then shows a nifty little uh, link at the bottom to view the calendar for the full-blown calendar you'd expect, or the list of all announcements. And then we also have volunteer opportunities. So it's just another way of displaying content. Uh, in this case, this is content that's been specifically featured for the front page. So on this page, there are at, at least four views here uh, that are automatically flowing through content that we've created. Uh, we don't have to change these once they're set up. They just automatically handle the content that we pass at it. So you might be asking yourself, how does views actually work? Uh, well, I, uh, I was talking to Tess Flynn. She's a, a great Drupal contributor and another member of the Twin Cities. Uh, she kind of gave me this analogy and shared some of these graphics with me, so I'm happy to share these with you as well. Um, she told me it works a little bit like a bathtub, okay? So we have a bathtub, um, and this is where the story with my daughter comes in. So, so I'm giving my daughter a bath. Um, we have the bathtub, okay, so it's, it's structure. Um, it's, it's what we need to take a bath. Without the bathtub, you really can't, you know, can't do much. Um, this, is, this kind of is the uh, analogous to the, the networking, the hardware, this is the server, this is kind of the structure that contains our website. Next, we need some water. We need to, to fill up the bathtub. Um, this is our Drupal site, essentially. It's, it's everything that is contained within Drupal, the, the fields, the configuration, all those things. But there's something missing. If I, if I uh, was going to give my daughter a bath and I, I showed her, it's like, oh, here's the bathtub and here's the water. Uh, she would not be excited about this. She would be like, okay, there's, um, there's something missing. It's duckies. Okay? So we have duckies. We, ha we, we have duckies in our bathtub that make our website interesting, that make it unique. This is actually the content. Uh, a website without content is not really helpful or effective or useful or, I don't know, you, there's no reason for it. So the duckies are the content. And duckies come in different sorts of flavors. They come, you know, in this case, different colors. Um, if, you've, if you've seen all the duckies that you can get, you can get, like, Marvel duckies with Iron Man and, you know, Wizard of Oz duckies and whatever. My point is, there's different content types. 
uh, that differentiate the different types of duckies here. Um, and what we, you know, this is our website with content in it, but uh, it's a little disorganized. We just have this big bathtub full of duckies, uh, and they're all kind of floating around all over the place. Well, next, we introduce views. Views is essentially a net that helps us keep our ducks in a row. It helps us take the duckies that we want, uh, sort them, put them in a particular order, and then keep them in a particular way so that we can display them in an ordered fashion with a particular set or uh, whatever sort of uh, sub that, subset that we want so that other people can view and consume and use the, the content that we're actually trying to, uh, to share with them through the website. So to, to recap that analogy, if that didn't really work for you, basically a view is a, it, it's cre uh, grabbing a selection of content, it's formatting it and uh, sorting it into a particular order, and then it displays it in a particular way, uh, whether it's a block or a page or a RSS feed or a slideshow, uh, it doesn't really matter how it's being displayed, it is a view at that point. So I've used the word displays, I've kind of thrown that around. Uh, that's actually a, a, a terminology within, within uh, views. Uh, you create the view which has sort of the structure of, you know, what am I actually trying to aggregate? What am I trying to show? You know, what, what's the content? Uh, and then displays help you show it in different ways. So for example, the, the example I gave earlier with the, uh, the, the blog post, um, you might create a view that says, show me all blog posts sorted chronologically. Uh, then you'd create displays to say, okay, well, I want a page display. Uh, it shows up at a particular URL. It has a menu link. Uh, it's, it's a full-blown page that shows the list. And I want to see 20 on that page with a pager. Uh, there might also be another, page, or another display for the block. Maybe you want, here are some recent blog posts. Maybe instead of uh, 20, that'd be kind of intense to have 20 on the, on the front page. Uh, maybe we only have three or five, a, a smaller number. Uh, instead of showing the, the teaser of the blog post, the first paragraph or whatever, maybe we only want to see the title, the author, and the date, or, or something like that. Uh, it's essentially the same content displayed in a different way. So a, a particular display contains all of the filter criteria, the sort criteria, the thing that makes it uh, ready to be displayed, and then the actual particular way that it's being displayed on the, on the page. All right, so I have a demo here. Uh, this is a presentation I've given before, but uh, I've never, uh, I've always done just a live demo. Uh, I've been encouraged and <laughs> to, to not do a live demo this year, so I'm going to flip through some slides. Um, I, I still have the live site up that I can, I can play with if we need to, but uh, I have screenshots of everything. Uh, if you have any questions or can't really see anything, feel free to shout out, let me know. Um, but yeah, so here are some things we're gonna step through. We're gonna start by installing views. Uh, but actually, before we do that, we need to set up Drupal 8. In this case, we're using Drupal 8. Uh, we're gonna just gonna use a standard installation profile. Uh, and then we created some content. Uh, it, it's really hard to create lists or, or dynamic lists of things without content to actually use. So here is everything that I did to prepare for this, uh, for this demo. I installed Drupal. I created, I think, three pieces of article content. That's it. Next, installing views. So I mentioned I've given this presentation before. Um, this is actually an old slide. This is what it would take to install views in Drupal 7. Uh, in Drupal 8, things get a little bit easier. Uh, you would typically have to download the views module. You'd have to download the chaos tools module because it's a dependency on views. Uh, but fortunately, in Drupal 8, both of those are, views at least, is part of Drupal core. So we don't have to go and download it. It's already there. Uh, and even Chaos Tools is already uh, incorporated. A lot of the features and, and uh, APIs are already incorporated with Drupal Core, so we don't have to go and download anything. Um, in fact, we don't even have to enable the modules. If we choose the standard installation profile, it's already installed, it's already enabled for us, um, and that's uh, because Views is used by pretty much every website. Uh, it, it's, it's assumed that you're going to want Views on your website, so it's just all, already enabled, installed, ready to go. So yeah, to install views, you just move on to the next step. There's not really anything to do there. So here we go. We have our Drupal website. Um, you install it, boom, you have Drupal 8. Uh, if you've never seen Drupal 8 before, you'll know some things that are a little bit different. I'm gonna try to highlight some of those as we go through since this is the first time that we've done kind of a Drupal 7 to Drupal 8 uh, comparison. Uh, I should also say real quick though that 
Uh, anything that we talk about today is directly transferable to Drupal 7. Uh, a lot of the, the techniques that I'm going to be talking about are, are the same. Uh, there's very, very little difference between what happens in Drupal 7 and Drupal 8. It's just some of the configuration is slightly different. Uh, the screenshots, uh, the, what you see on the page is going to be a little bit different. Uh, so here we go. We have our, our site. Um, the first thing we need to do is go to Structure and Views. Um, that'll give us this page right here where we can see all of the views that are currently being used on the website. Uh, we have a bunch of views already uh, that were created with Drupal. Uh, and that's because in, in previous versions of Drupal, it was kind of hard-coded. Uh, it wasn't using views out of the box since it wasn't in core. So uh, it, it was really hard to kind of change a lot of the administrative pages that show dynamic lists and the front page and things like that. So simply by having views here, all of those pages have been rewritten in views. So if we needed to change uh, one of the administrative pages that come out of the box, it's really easy to jump in and just click edit. And we can add fields or change configuration or whatever we want to do. But we're interested in creating a new view. We're going to feature our article content. So uh, we're going to click the link here that says Add New View. Uh, that takes us to this page where we can uh, type in some information about our view. We're going to add the name. We're going to call it News. Uh, we're going to add a short little description to describe uh, to administrators what this view is actually used for. Uh, and then the next part here, the view settings, uh, I heard it described to me uh, that if you can describe what you want to see in a view, in a single sentence, views can probably do it. Um, that's a, a, a pretty uh, bold claim, I think, but uh, the, the team, uh, the Drupal uh, views team kind of took it literally a little bit and uh, improved the usability and by saying, okay, well, show content of type article tagged with, and there's nothing there now, but sorted by newest first. Um, some other options here, instead of like, we're showing content, we want to see article content. You could also do users, you could do vocabularies, taxonomy. Uh, any entity really can be, can be used in views here. Uh, and then the next part here we have, we have the page settings. Uh, this is the first display that views is creating for us. It's, it's going to be a page. We simply, um, by checking the box to enable the page, it assumes uh, some of this information for us because we called the view news. It automatically filled in the page title and the URL for us. If you want to change those, you can. And then we have a, a display settings. How do we actually want this formatted? Uh, do we want to see a table? Do we want to see a grid? Do we want to see just an HTML list, like bullets or numbers? Uh, in this case, we're going to choose unformatted list, which is really just going to be div separated. Uh, so view rows separated by divs. Uh, and then we're going to show teasers. So uh, it's going to be like the, the first paragraph or, or so, the title, the author, uh, a link to view more, uh, stuff like that. So that works pretty well for us. And then items to display, how many do we actually want to see uh, on this page of news articles? Uh, we said 10 here. We also said we want to see the menu links. We want to add it to the main menu. We'll scroll down a little bit. Uh, and then it has a handy link here to add an RSS feed. So if people are subscribing to your content, they're using feed readers or something like that, uh, all you have to do is check the box and it automatically creates it for you. Uh, and then it's, it's doing that with XML here. Right, and then a little bit further down, we have another checkbox to create another display. In this case, it's a block. So uh, this is going to be our latest news. Our, in this case, we're saying five most recent uh, news articles that were created. And we're saying here we want to see a HTML list. So this is going to be bullets. We'll see a bulleted list that we can show on the front page or wherever we want. All right, so this looks good. We'll click Save and Edit. It'll take us to the, the views configuration page. Now, this might be a little uh, intimidating, but it's actually not too bad. Uh, views is very, very good at allowing sort of iterative, uh, iterative changes, iterative experimentation. Um, so it's great because you can click on any of those links, any of those blue pieces or the that drop links, like the add with the, the down arrow. Um, you can click those, you can do stuff, and then you'll see a preview. So actually, before we do anything, if we scroll down the page, uh, there's a preview here which shows what we have already. So it's our three content that we created. It's, it's the page it's showing off here. So it's three on a page. It has a little photo that I uploaded for each piece of content. It has all the tags, the read more link, and all that, and it's, it's, that's it. Uh, and because we said that we wanted a RSS feed, it actually gave the little link for the RSS feed at the bottom of the page, too. So it's, it's all kind of baked in automatically with just that one configuration page. Uh, but let's say there's something we want to change. So, for example, right out of the box, the 
the menu isn't, it's not put in the right menu. Uh, it doesn't really know which menu to put it in. So if we click the little box for, or the, the little link there for normal uh, news, we can go to the, uh, you get this little pop-up and we'll click parent, main navigation, done. And then that will put that into the main navigation menu uh, at the top of our page. So we'll wanna click apply, we'll close this kind of overlay, this uh, pop-up, and then we'll wanna click save. Well, actually, but before we click save, um, Views is really good at reminding you to click save. Uh, it's very, very common when you're doing a lot of these iterative changes to just jump in, do some stuff, okay, it looks good, and then go back to the front page or go back to the page you were working on. Uh, so here it's telling you, it's like, hey, wait a minute, don't go anywhere, you have unsaved changes, don't forget to click save. Um, but fortunately, it's, it's, it's kind of gracious with you, so if you do forget, if you don't click save, uh, it's be actually storing the configuration changes you've made in JavaScript. So if you come back to this page uh, within a reasonable amount of time, your configuration changes will still be there. Uh, so you can still have another chance to click save before all is lost. Uh, but we didn't forget, we're gonna click save and we'll go back to the, the brand new page that was created. So this page did not exist before. Uh, it's a new menu link at the very top called news. We click on it and we're seeing the news page. We just created a, our, our first view, our first display, um, a page display. But wait a minute, we also checked the box for block. I don't see a block on the page for the latest news that we created. Uh, well, the reason for this, it's, it's a, a very common uh, question that I've received uh, from beginners is, I, I created a block, but I, it's not showing up anywhere. How do I get it to display? Uh, well, it's actually very easy. And the, the Drupal 8 uh, block system improves this a little bit. So to get there, we just need to go to structure and blocks. You'll get this nifty uh, block layout page. Um, so all of the blocks that are on the, on the site show up on the left side there. And on the right side are all the blocks that we're able to add into the regions, all the different places on the, on the site where blocks can go. Uh, listed here, we have lists, views, and the first one is news. News didn't exist before, that's the one we just created. So all we have to do is click that link. It'll bring this pop-up, where it'll ask us some information about how we actually want that to be shown. So, uh, yeah, I wanna show the title, because I set that in views. I, I wanna see five, that was the default that I chose when I created the display. Um, and then we have some kind of visibility settings here in the middle, um, where or how do we want it displayed. And then we have uh, region, where, where actually do we want this to show up on the site? Um, Regions might be things like header, footer, left, right, sidebar, uh, content, content top, things like that. Um, so we'll choose, you know, left or right sidebar, uh, and we'll we'll save and we'll we'll go check it out. Um, before we go check that out, though, I want to take just a, a brief uh, rabbit hole, maybe. Uh, so if you if you are used to Drupal seven and you're coming to Drupal eight. Um, this is a, a pretty awesome thing. Uh, the new kind of restructured block system. Um, it's been a problem where like once you've displayed a block in one place, well, it's, it's displayed there. You can't create another block somewhere else that's the same content because it, uh, you, you can't show the same block in two places, I guess is what I'm saying. Well, fortunately in Drupal 8, this is completely redone. Um, so you can click these links here on the side to create as many of those blocks as you want, as many instances of those blocks as you want. And you can put them anywhere, on any region, on any page, uh, as much as you want. So we could put the, the latest news on the sidebar on every other page, but put it in the footer on the front page or something like that. Uh, and it's totally flexible and easy and it, it just works, which is, I'm pretty cool, I'm pretty stoked about. So we click save and then instantly back on our website, we have latest news. So it's, uh, it's not bad, uh, it could probably be better. It's kind of just a list of links at this point, which is better than we had, but not super helpful. I'd love to see uh, maybe like the author and the date, like how long ago the, the particular content was created. Uh, so we could go back to structure views, we could go to find our view, uh, we could click edit from there and kind of reconfigure it. Um, but there's actually a shortcut, a really handy shortcut. Uh, this is also kind of redone in, in Drupal 8 to be a little more flexible, but if you hover over content or if you hover over uh, like the blocks or the header, um, you'll get this nifty little contextual link. Uh, so it's a little kind of pencil. If you click that, you'll get some options. The option we care about here is edit view. Um, this is gonna take us back to the view, not just to the view that we were originally using to create this, but even directly to the display 
to the particular block display that rendered that particular view. So it's a huge time saver, uh, just to click at it, go straight here, and you can configure what you need to do. So in this case, we, we were saying we want to add a couple extra fields. We, we don't want to just see the title. We want to see the author, maybe the, the time ago, how long ago it was created. So to do that, we'll go over to the field section. We'll click Add. And that's going to create a pop-up for us that's going to let us add fields. Uh, there's a ton of fields, even right out of the box of Drupal core. There's a lot of things you can uh, add into this section. Um, so it's really handy to use the search box and the filters at the very top. So if you type into the search, I know I need author information. I'll type author. It filters down the list to be one kind of concise uh, set of, of options. Uh, I'm going to choose one that says content authored by. That's going to be the username, the person who created that particular piece of content, as well as the authored on, so the date that it was created on. I'm going to click the apply this display button. And then it's going to take me to the, the first configuration page of the, the first uh, field that I'm adding. Um, notice here up at the top it says one of two. So we added two fields. So this is the first field that we're configuring. Uh, in this case, though, I think this kind of works. I, there's a lot of options here, and there's a lot of things that I, I'm, I'm not going to have time to go into. Um, but I encourage you to check this out, to, to play with this uh, later. If you're installing views, if you're curious about what some of these settings like in all these field sets actually do, play with it. Go in there, click Edit, make a change, click Save, check it out. Uh, or even use the preview at the bottom to save yourself from having to like, actually change what's on the visible on the website. But in this case, this actually works. I, I don't need to change anything about this field. I just want to see the username, and that's what it's showing me. So I'll click Apply and Continue. OK, next we're on the Authored On field. Uh, we need to configure some stuff here, uh, but very little. Uh, we start with a date format there. Uh, the original, uh, the default is long date, which would have been uh, Monday, January 15th, uh, you know, 2015 uh, at, you know, uh, 7.15 a.m. Or, or something like that. It's a long format. I think that may, might be a little bit overkill for a sidebar block. It's a little bit too much, uh, a little too verbose. So I changed it to time ago with a go appended. Um, so in this case, it'll say it was created five days ago or two hours ago or something like that. So that's, that's about all I have to change here. So that looks good. I'll click Apply this display. Uh, and then I want to click Save on the view. It'll remind me about that. And it'll take me uh, directly back to the page I was on before. So uh, another benefit of using the contextual link, clicking the little uh, hover and then the, the, the Edit View button, is that it actually takes you right back to the page you were on when you click that link after you click Save. So it's a huge time saver to make quick little changes like that. So yeah, so we added those two fields, and immediately on the site we see we have the by uh, username, and then how long ago the particular uh, piece of content was created. Uh, so maybe I'm, I'm working on this. Uh, it looks pretty good. Maybe I want to see the title followed by the, the, the credit, the, the author information. So on one line, I want to see example article by D8 views with a date kind of below it. Um, this is pretty common, you know, it's, it's pretty easy to do. Uh, let me walk you through that really quick, because this is actually one of the, uh, one of the many kind of understated features of, of views, just the flexibility and ease to reformat and change uh, the content there, the, the fields that you're working with here. So yet again, we have to click the little contextual link. We'll go back to the view that we're look looking at. We're on this page here. Uh, the first thing we need to do, uh, first and foremost, we see the fields. We have the new um, authored by and the authored on fields. Um, the first thing we need to do is actually reorder this list. Uh, we want to reformat the title. We want to kind of include it next to the title. Um, and the way that we can do that, we can share information from between the fields, but the title is only going to be aware of fields that come before it. Uh, it's has to do with the rendering process. It, it kind of renders the fields in order. So anything that you want to include on another field, you just have to reorder to move it to the top. Uh, it's a very, very common and kind of frustrating uh, issue sometimes. But if you just remember, rearrange it, move it to the top if you want to uh, add it in another field, and it, it's not so much a problem. So, yeah, so I rearrange it. I, I put the authored by at the very, very top. Um, I hide it, and then I click Edit on the, uh, the title. So I want to edit the title brings up the title configuration here. Um, I then go down to the rewrite results um, field set. I click that. 
and then I click override the output of this field with custom text. Now, it looks a little bit intimidating at this point, or, or uh, unclear exactly what you can do. Uh, what are your options? What, what it, does it use variables? Does it use twig? Does it use PHP? Like, how do you actually access the other, uh, the other fields that you've been using here in views? Uh, well, fortunately, if you scroll down a little bit, there's a section here for replacement patterns. Now, you have to expand it, so it's, it's often overlooked. Um, but you expand the replacement patterns, and you see, in this case, these are uh, uh, tokens that you can in, you know, insert into the text to use that particular field. So uh, I already inserted these here. I said title by UID, and UID is the username uh, of the person who created the content. So if I go ahead and save this, uh, if I save the view, go back to the front page, and then I see I have example article by D8 views all in one line with the kind of the date created below that. Um, this, this can be used uh, pretty extensively. Um, sometimes it can be abused if you don't really know, uh, like uh, if you don't know a lot of what you're doing, but that's okay. I, I, I am a big fan of uh, trying things out, making mistakes, learning what you did wrong, and then kind of learning the better ways of doing things. Uh, that's the way I learn best. So I encourage you to jump right in, edit views, make changes, save it, go check it out, make another change. Uh, it's really the best way to learn views and all the settings that you have at your disposal there. Um, so, so we're looking at the site. We're kind of clicking around. We have the latest news here. But you know, if you look at this page, it's, it's a little bit redundant, right? Because we have the news page. And then we have latest news on the sidebar, but it's showing the same content. Uh, that's, we, don't, we don't really care about seeing the latest news when we're already on the news page. It's, it's taking about the space and unhelpful. Uh, so we need to change the, uh, the settings here to say, OK, well, let's show this block on every other page except the news page. Let's, let's hide it everywhere else. You know, show it on the home page. Show it on the about page. Don't not, you know, do not show it on the news page. So to do this, we're going to jump right in again, uh, this time not in views, but in block settings. Uh, we're going to go use the contextual link. We're going to configure the block, which should bring up the page like we saw when we first created or inserted the block. Uh, and we're going to go down to the visibility settings. In this case, we're going to say pages. We're going to type in the URL uh, for the particular page that we don't want to show it on. And then we want to make sure that we select hide from the listed pages. Uh, this can be really, really flexible. So if you wanted to show it on uh, any section, uh, subsection of pages or not show it on those pages, it's just as easy as toggling the option there. Um, so that looks pretty good. Uh, I don't think we need to change anything else. So we'll click Save Block, go back to the site, and we see now that news is taking up a lot more room on the page because there's no sidebar there on the right side. And then it's no longer showing the redundant information. Well, I also created an About page up at the very top. Uh, if I click and view the About page, I can see that I do see the latest news. So I tested it out. It's working pretty good. OK, so now we've created a view uh, with two displays. We've changed visibility settings. We've rewritten the fields. Uh, this covers a lot. That, that you might be surprised how much you can do with what you've just learned so far. Um, I would be a little bit remiss not to talk just briefly about some of the things that are brand new to Drupal 8, though. Um, specifically, there are some new displays. Uh, if you're coming from Drupal 7, and you know this is uh, this is pretty exciting for me. Um, there's a new option for REST export. Uh, the, the Drupal 8 version is really good at doing this kind of. You might have heard of red, headless Drupal or um, kind of accessing the content that you have on your site without having to actually go to the website. So if you want to integrate with a mobile app or a API, or if you want to make your website an API, essentially. You can choose REST export, in this case, and create a list of whatever you want in views, and then access it through JSON or XML or whatever you want. Uh, it's all built in. You don't have to go and install anything else. It's, it's right there, which is pretty cool. Uh, there's also the ability uh, to copy a display as another display type. Uh, this is huge. Uh, <laughs> if you, again, if you've used, Drupal, uh, if you've used views before, um, a huge, huge uh, feature request that we've had for a very long time is, okay, I've created the block for latest news. Now what if I want to create another block that's very similar but different? Maybe I want to sort the list by, uh, or show it by only a particular author, or, or something that's very similar but has its own unique configuration. Uh, you can create a new display 
but it's not going to actually clone the display that you created. It's going to start over with the, I'm going to show all blog posts. I'm going to show, you know, a page or, you know, 20 of them or 10 of them or however many I said. Um, so this is huge. So you could actually create a view like we just did, and then you say, okay, well, I want something just like this display I already have, but I want to show that as a block instead of a page, or I want to show it as an RSS feed instead of a block. It's super easy. You just click the drop down on the view, you choose which one you want to duplicate it as, and it creates it. Uh, this is huge. <laughs> this is, I don't want to um, overstate it, but it, this is a huge time saver for, uh, for everyone. <laughs> But this is really just a drop in the bathtub, um, to keep it the analogy. Uh, you can do anything you want with, with this sort of uh, workflow that we've, we've described here, uh, whether it's events uh, using maybe calendars or upcoming events, slideshows with carousels or things like that. Uh, there are still a lot of modules and plugins that integrate with views so that all you have to do is create the view, choose the format or the, uh, the plugin or whatever that you want to display it as, uh, so, for example, if we're creating a slideshow, we would create a new block uh, display and we'd say format, you know, depending on your slideshow, it might be called slideshow or flex slider or whatever, uh, and then it automatically taps into the fields you're using. So you'd say, well, I want the big, uh, the header photo that I, I took with this, the featured one and the title, uh, and maybe a brief, you know, the call out thing, uh, and then it just does it for you. You don't have to write code. You don't have to know uh, what the jQuery is really doing, uh, which is, again, super empowering for people who don't know code or they're learning code, they want to see how it works. This is huge. Um, but yeah, but it, the list just keeps going on, on and on and on. Uh, you can do any type of content, any sort of feature. Uh, Drupal is naturally a content management system, uh, and I think Views is really what makes it good at uh, regurgitating and formatting and using the content across your website. So regardless of what you're wanting to use it for, uh, you know, what we've talked about today is really just kind of a a drop in the bathtub. It's really just a tiny, tiny uh, subset of what we can really do. And I really feel like this is Drupal's competitive advantage. Um, the, the workflow that I've outlined here uh, can give you access to create uh, most of the content-related features that you have on your website. Uh, so regardless of if it's a event calendar or a slideshow or the, the employee staff bios or things like that, um, it doesn't matter. You create a content. You add fields to the content that make it unique, that make it kind of uh, easy for people to add new content of particular formats and whatever. Uh, once you have that kind of set up, you try adding some content. Uh, if possible, use some real content, because that, that helps make sure that you're actually building something that's useful. Um, and then once you have some content and it seems to work and you're not missing any fields, you can jump in and create views, use the preview, change the options until you have what you're looking for. And it's super, super powerful. So we're able to do almost any feature. You know, all the options I gave on the previous page, uh, you could do with, with this workflow uh, and a few extra modules for fields or for the uh, slideshow, things like that, calendar. Almost any feature without any code, which is huge. And the reason is because community. Um, because people like Earl Miles and Tim Plunkett and a bunch of other people on the Drupal, uh, Drupal views and core uh, initiative and the uh, the views module itself have contributed uh, to tons and tons of time to make uh, Drupal what it is, to make views what it is, uh, and it's it's huge for me. It's a big part of, and Drupal is now a big part of my life uh, because someone introduced me to to Drupal and helped kind of mentor me through this process. So I mentioned at the very beginning, uh, I have a real passion for helping people who are learning Drupal to become empowered and kind of get over those roadblocks, uh, kind of taking it to the next level and you know kind of being empowered that way. Uh, the reason is, is because someone helped me. Uh, several people helped me, really. Um, so I'm now kind of passing it back to you guys. Uh, if you feel like you learned something today, uh, as you develop in your Drupal career, uh, don't let it stop there. Don't, you know, kind of work in your bubble. Um, get involved with the community, because the community is really the, the reason why Drupal is what it is today. With that related uh, topic, there, there is sprinting this Friday. Uh, and you might be thinking to yourself, uh, well, I don't know anything about code. I, you know, I, I'm a beginner. This is a beginner topic. Why are you asking me to come and sprint? It sounds, you know, it sounds complicated. It's, it's hard. Uh, well, it's you, everyone needs, needs to sprint. Everyone needs to come to the sprint. Um, th there's a saying, I don't think it's Drupal specific, but there's a saying that, like, uh, you don't know what you don't know. Uh, a lot of these people that do Drupal, and I've been doing Drupal for almost eight years, 
Uh, I, I, at this point, know a lot about Drupal. I am not, po it's not possible for me to know what you guys don't know, what, what piece you're missing, or how our documentation is not you know, sitting with you. How, what did I miss in the slides that, that didn't, uh, that caused you to kind of get a hiccup in your process? Uh, we don't know because we already know the tricks to make it work. So we need beginners. We need people who are, have fresh eyes and fresh minds to jump in and try things out. Let us know what's wrong, what can be improved. Uh, so even if you don't know code, uh, even if all that you can do is help with some documentation, even if all that you can do is uh, go through a process and see if you get an error, those are all very helpful things to have, uh, have people help out with at the sprint. So the sprint is this Friday. We do have a first time sprinters workshop. Uh, I'll be a mentor there helping out. Uh, it's at 9 a.m. So if you need help getting your environment set up locally, if you want to set up Drupal, if you want to learn about patching or using Git or using the process to contribute on Drupal core, or not even Drupal core, but Drupal.org uh, with modules and things like that, uh, try to make it to the 9 a.m. sprint uh, or, you know, by 9 a.m. and you, we'll walk you through the process. We'll have a presentation and help everyone get set up that way. Uh, and you will be a huge help. Uh, if you come and learn something, it, it, it is significant. There are a few other ways to help, though. Um, specifically, Views is new in Drupal 8. Uh, it, it is new in Drupal Core, even if a lot of things haven't changed. Um, a lot of things have changed. Uh, so there's the message here on the page, you know, this is basically, uh, this, this is the help system that was on the, or this documentation was on the, the help for views before. Now it's incorporated in Drupal 8, so it's been migrated or moved into the, the documentation page on Drupal. Uh, and you notice here it says incomplete. Uh, this help is missing stuff. There are typos. There are things that have changed that can be corrected. Uh, and you should also notice once you log into the Drupal website, there's that link there. It says you can edit this page too. Uh, it can be really, really intimidating to think, okay, I don't know anything about Drupal. Uh, I have no right to edit what other people have written. Uh, I'd like to try to get rid of that misconception. It's not true. Uh, if you notice something that's wrong, like blatantly wrong, or if you feel like the, the, the documentation steps are out of place or not clear, uh, you can edit. You can go click edit. Uh, it'll create a revision, so everyone's changes will still be saved. People can review what you do, so if, if you're concerned about making a mistake, it's not a problem. Uh, and you can contribute in this way, even if you don't come to the sprint. Even if you go home and you know, check out this uh, later, anytime you see a page like this in documentation, you can edit it and uh, make Drupal a little bit better. So I do want to say a quick thank you, uh, again, to the, the Views module uh, contributors and the Views uh, in Drupal core initiative team. Also, Joe Fender from Lullabot and Oliver Seldman from Advomatic. Uh, they both wrote some great blog posts that uh, helped me kind of get refreshed on what's new in Drupal 8 for, for Views. And lastly, of course, you. Uh, you know, I'm here to help help you guys with this. Um, and there's a little bit you can do to help me too. So the uh, Drupal Association uses ratings to you know for these sessions to determine who gets to come back or who gets to present you know at next year's. If you felt like this was helpful, or if you have constructive criticism, if you have feedback, uh, I'd love for you guys to just you can go to the uh, the DrupalCon website uh, on the session page. There's a link at the top to actually give your feedback. Uh, it would be super helpful to just go check that out, leave your feedback. Uh, like I said, good or bad, it, it's, it's helpful for me to, to improve. Um, yeah, and so I'll get to take a look at that and, and improve my slideshow and, you know, kind of learn what I can do better. And then also the, the Drupal Association can look at it and see uh, you know, what can be done better next year as well. So uh, with that, I have a couple minutes. Uh, 15 minutes to take some questions. So we have a mic uh, right there. If you could go, it's, the session's being recorded. So if you could line up at the mic, if you have any questions, and uh, I'll see what I can do. Can you put the sprint URL back up? Yes. <coughs> the, the, sorry, what, which URL? The sprint one. The sprint one. Yep. And that's also on the, the uh, DrupalCon LA website. So you can go check it out from there. Right. So I'm just kind of wondering why you have to go to them and like, just add the title to the sprint one or the username instead of having to have the username and the subject as a username to display on the site. Yeah, that's a really good question. Uh, I think part of it is the semantics of 
um, I'm, I'm viewing the title, it's kind of the primary purpose. Uh, the, the kind of meta information is the username. So I, uh, the way I think about it for like information architecture is that it makes sense for it to be on the main uh, piece of content, the main thing that you're seeing instead of the other way around. You could do it either way, it, it should work. huge. Sure. Are, are you talking about the administrative side of creating the view or displaying the content? Or the display of the content mm -hmm. because it, um, it seems like it's being uh, presented in a certain way that it's not necessarily the way that the Right, that's a good question. Uh, I think a lot of it comes down to the theming. Uh, a lot of the mobile responsive related things are, are in the theme layer, um, so it would depend on the theme specifically. Uh, you could, however, with the new kind of in Drupal 8 thing, you could create multiple displays, or it's not new to Drupal 8, but you can create multiple displays of say a block that has slightly different fields to, you know, maybe on mobile you don't want to see the photo previews of the, the articles or something. Get rid of it create another one, and then in blocks you could say, show this on the front page, don't show it on the front page, whatever. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sure. No, that's a great question. And I, I think you, you actually touched on one of the greatest features of uh, what we get with views and the, the view versus display architecture, the way that it's set up, is that you can create a view uh, that, that affects all, uh, all articles, and then the displays will slightly tweak the results that will format it or sort it in a different way. Um, so if, for example, it's like, well now, uh, in addition to articles, we also created another content type for press releases, and we want them to show up in the same list. We don't want to have to go to every single display and make the change over and over and over again. We can just go to, uh, in this case, it's, uh, older versions of views called it like a master display, or it's kind of the one that affects all of them. Uh, you can go, you can click edit, you can change it to say, okay, include not just, or filter to show only articles and press releases, and then all of the displays are immediately updated to reflect that change. Uh, the, the difference between uh, the clone, uh, if you create a clone of one, like say a block, uh, and then you create a clone of it, it's kind of assumed that you're going to be making some sort of changes to it. So you would, uh, it, say a, a block already has 99% of what you need, but you also need an additional field. Maybe you want to show it on the author page instead of the about us page. 
if it's almost there, if it's all done, uh, in, in older versions, you would basically have to create a new view that inherits all of the default values and then make all those changes all over again before you can then kind of keep making changes. Uh, this allows you to say, this is almost exactly what I want. Let's clone it and then make whatever little changes I need to make it unique. Right, but they're disconnected at that point. No, just just the display. So, so let me let me change your example slightly. So maybe instead, you know, in one example you show three three pieces of content, and then you want to show another one that shows four instead. So what you would do is you would go to the view, you'd go to the display that you that is almost already done, you clone it, and then you'd say overwrite, you know, change this to, to, to four instead of three, and then that would make them distinct. Uh, you'd still have everything else that was original from that one, but moved over and then that one changed different. Right. So that would be, let me, let me jump back real quick. That would actually be uh, different displays on the same view. Because if you're, if you're wanting to fundamentally show the same content, but just format it differently or with different criteria, then you'd create displays of that one view. So in this case, we have the news view with a page, a feed, and a block. Those are fundamentally the same pieces of content, just shown in drastically different ways. Uh, if you created, in this case, if you cloned, if you duplicated this block, uh, to make another block that shows five uh, or, or six instead of five, all you'd have to do is go duplicate block. A new display would appear next to here. Uh, you could give a unique display name to show it's like, you know, latest articles with six or whatever you want to call it. It's not important. Uh, and then you go down here and you'd say instead of five, six, and that change would be saved in the particular display that you just created from the clone. And do they both work off the same query? Yes. Uh, it depends, I think. <laughs> It depends how you're defining query. If you're, if, you're, if you're saying technically like the actual query that was written to get this information, uh, I would assume probably not. Uh, it is possible, by the way, just to, you can display the query that, that views generates if you're, if you're technical and want to see what it's doing. Uh, there's a setting in, in views to actually show that at the bottom above the preview. Uh, so you can see what it's doing, debug performance stuff. But. Yeah, that's a good question too. Um, so, so in uh, I, I talked about the master display um, in the, the way that this was adapted in Drupal seven and then uh, now carried over in Drupal eight is that when you add or when, when you make a change to a setting, you have the option of saying, does this affect all of them, all of the displays, or is this unique to just this particular display? So when I went back and uh, yeah, so see right here when I edited the authored on field uh, at the very top. It assumed already I wanted to override it, but I have the option of saying uh, all, or I, I forget what the specific terminology is, but you can say this should affect all displays that are not already overwritten. Uh, it, to be honest, I don't know if this is the default for when you create a new display, or if it's just I checked the box for block and it assumed that was different. Yes. No, you, it, it's, it's a very good point, too. I agree. It, it, it's a mistake that I still make today. I get excited with my configuration. I just click save, and then, oh, look, all my displays are different. Uh, fortunately, it's fairly easy to set it back how it was, but it still is pretty annoying. Can you explain what some of the displays are? Like, how much they're mm -hmm. Yep. Um, yep. So, so it, uh, let me run through these really quickly. Uh, attachment basically uh, attaches itself to another view. So if you wanted to show a, 
um, the one featured article uh, at the very top of all of the other articles. You could say, uh, here is the list of all of the articles offset by one, so it doesn't show the first one or, or something. And then you say, attachment, this is a featured one that maybe has a little bit more information or a larger photo or something like that. And then when you show the page, it'll actually show that at the top. So it's attached to another view at the top or bottom. Uh, Yes, so uh, whenever you create a display, uh, all display-related settings are right in this middle section right here. So these are all the block-specific settings, things that are relevant for blocks. Uh, the page one is all the stuff that's relevant for pages. So, uh, so we have like the URL, the menu, things like that. So each display will have its own set of settings that are right there in the middle. Um, and really quickly, let me, let me step through some of those other, uh, other options. So block, uh, we already talked about blocks. Uh, embed, I'm not 100% sure. I, I tried reading documentation and finding exactly what it's gonna be used for. Uh, my interpretation of what I've found so far is that the embed is so that you can actually embed the view in your content. Uh, that's a feature that's been asked for a lot, and uh, super helpful if, if that is the case. If someone knows, do, does anyone know for sure what the embed display is used for? <laughs> it's brand new to Drupal 8, so I haven't used it before. Okay, so it, I couldn't find the documentation. If you find out and you wanna go update the documentation, that would be super helpful. Um, entity reference, actually that's another one. I, I haven't had a chance to, to use entity reference field in Drupal 8 yet, or, or the, the, the display yet. Uh, but I know in previous versions of Drupal it was complicated to show, uh, say for example, this content is related to another piece of content. How do you show the other piece of content on this content? Uh, it, it was complicated, there's relationships, it, it, it got confusing. I'm hoping that this optimizes that in some way, but I, again, the documentation was a little lacking, so I, I couldn't find information about it. Uh, feed, RSS feed, XML feed, things like that. Page, self-explanatory. And then rest, I mentioned that a little bit. It's, you know, you can basically say, you know, here's my JSON, here's where people can access the content on my site through JSON or another uh, RESTful service. It, yeah, it's a different way of displaying the, uh, a feed, sort of. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Yeah, you're welcome. My comment was actually about that, or my, my question about that web export. Is that, does that remain dynamic? Yeah, I, I think so. I, 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 would, I, I would hope so. The word export makes me think of the one-off send-out of that just data. Hmm. I, I don't believe so. Uh, everything that I saw, uh, and again, this is one that I haven't had a chance to jump into and use, but everything that I saw about the REST export was that it's, it's kind of like a, the, the feed uh, in that you, it'll give you, it'll generate a URL for you that you can access to, pass arguments to, and you'll get the content back. I know. <laughs> I couldn't agree more. There's a lot of people. <laughs> Thank you. And it, it is officially the, the time, unfortunately, I have to step down. Um, but. If you have any more questions, I'll be around here packing up. Please come on up, and thank you all very much. Oh, also, my slides are available uh, on the session page for this session. Uh, they're at the very, very top. You can click and view them. It's, it's the same Google Slides. Uh, it's also the bit.ly. I'll leave it up on the page until, I don't know, for a little bit. <laughs>